Okay, got some more coming in. All right, welcome to the Liberty Church of Christ. Everyone get your song books and turn to 138. 138. Brother Kerry Deaton will be directing that song in just a moment. 138. Before we begin our announcements, we want to say one announcement and then have a special prayer for her. Margaret Sarton, this is uh, Larry Sarton's wife, is in the Tupelo Hospital, and she was put into intensive care. She's in the ICU, and she is on a ventilator. So they, she's tested negative a couple of times for the uh, COVID-19. However, they don't know what's going on with her, so she needs a special prayer. There's, the family has asked us to do a special uh, prayer for her, and we're going to do that right now. So if everyone will, let's go to God in prayer. Mighty God, thank you so very much for allowing us to approach your wonderful throne. You are all powerful, and you're worthy to be worshipped, and we understand that your hand is not too short, that it cannot reach down on planet earth and affect the course of human nature. God, we know that you are able to do more than we can ask or even imagine. And right now, we're coming before you in this special prayer. All the saints are gathered together to worship you this day, and we lift our voices and our hearts and our spirits up before your throne as your dear children. And you said that when children, your children, ask you for anything that you will give and that you will respond. Father, we know that the effective, fervent prayer of your righteous people avails much because of your power and your ability. So it was these thoughts in mind as we pray the prayer of faith, nothing wavering, nothing doubting, we are praying for Margaret Sarton. You know what's wrong with her. The doctors are still struggling to find out why she's in the condition she's in. We ask you, Father, that you will open their eyes, open their minds, and help them to find out quickly what's going on, and give them the wisdom to react appropriately so that her body will be healed. God, you can heal her body with or without these great things that you've provided for us. And we appreciate doctors. We appreciate procedures and devices that help us, like the ventilator that she's on now. We appreciate these things. But we ask you, who are, is the giver of all good gifts, to intervene on behalf of Margaret Sarton. We ask that you will be with Larry as he is struggling. He's there with her, but yet he too needs strength and he needs wisdom. And we pray for our entire family during this time. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We will be doing the order that we've been doing the last few weeks after the announcements, the opening prayer. And the opening prayer will be led by Brother Michael Barron. Appreciate him so much. And then we'll have the uh, first song. The first song is 138, being led by Carrie Deaton. And then after that, we'll have the message. And then we'll follow that with the invitation song, also led by Brother Kerry. And then after that, we'll have a song in uh, preparation for the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper, the prayers for the Lord's Supper will be led by Brother Bob Alley. And he will also give the uh, prayer and thanksgiving for the contribution, the giving. After that, we'll have a fourth song led by Brother Kerry. And then we'll have a closing prayer, which will be voiced by Brother Van Roberts. So we appreciate everybody being out and uh, participating in the worship. Lee and Chandra Russell's child, Aubrey, she came down with a COVID-19. And I understand that uh, Lee's mother, Diane, may even have it. So once it gets into a family, it, it can spread. So be very, very careful with, uh, with the coronavirus and, and COVID-19 is real. And I appreciate so much uh, those that are able to be here. But you're, you're practicing all the guidelines that you feel is necessary to keep each other safe. So uh, continue to do that, and if there's anybody that needs any help, 
during this time, then use your church family. We, we are around. And so get in touch with the elders, and the elders are more than happy to get the servants out there to help you with whatever you need during this time. Many of you are not able to be with us, and that's why we're, going, we're recording this, and we're putting it up on YouTube and Facebook. So uh, tune in to that as well. And tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll have our worship online too. So uh, continue to be a part of that. Wednesday night at 7, we started a new study through the Bible. So uh, just because we're not able to meet doesn't mean that you cannot have a Bible study with us all together. And you can share this with your friends too. So glad everybody's here. Let's go to God in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day you've given us. Thank you for allowing us the privilege it is to gather together and worship you. Just pray you'll help us direct our minds toward you in this worship. Forget about this world. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to be with all those. we got many brothers and sisters and those in the community that are just sick with this coronavirus or cancer, just different things of this world. Father, we just ask you to keep your healing hand upon them, be with the medical staff tending to them, and be with our leaders, Father, of this country. Just pray they'll seek your guidance because you know what we need. You're our creator. Father, I just pray you'll be with the elders of this congregation as they try to make decisions that affect us. I pray you'll just strengthen our many weaknesses and forgive us of our sins. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 138. We'll sing verses 1 and 4, and then David will bring us our message. <clears throat> My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking. shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Brother David. Invitation song. Song of encouragement. Okay. Good morning. So good to see everybody. 226. Everybody get your psalm books and turn to 226. That is a song by way of encouragement. You know, we are here at Liberty are divided out into three groups. We have the group that's meeting right here in the auditorium, and then we've got a group that's meeting on the north side of this auditorium in the old fellowship hall, and then we have a group that's meeting up on the back side of us on the west side on the new activities building so we have three different groups going on and they're watching what's going on in the auditorium and we good to see everybody this morning and when we have a an invitation song a lot of people say, well what am I supposed to do you know I want to be baptized don't leave this area without making that known uh, let the folks there there's people there in all of these three venues we have an elder in each one and uh, you can go to them, our deacon, and say, look, I want to be baptized. And then we can make arrangements for that today. 
You say, well, I've been baptized, but I want to make a confession during this coronavirus times, and, and I, I, I really I have had fear in my heart, or I've had some problems in my life, and, and, and I've allowed it to cause me to do and think and say things that I need encouragement. So let that be known. Now, I know you can't uh, see what's going on. In the, we can't see what's going on over there in these other two venues, but there are people there that you can go to and say, I need the prayers of the congregation, and you don't let that stop you. We need to not let this uh, particular way we're doing things hinder us from doing what God wants us to do, what he wants you to do, which is to respond to the Lord's invitation. We need to keep that in our minds. Today, we're continuing a series that we began last week, to be or not to be. That is the question, and that's what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of few weeks. Last week, we talked about be steadfast. Now, when we talk about being something, we're talking about a state of being. If I, if I am being good, then I am a state of of being good. If I am being steadfast, if, if, you, if God said be steadfast, well what he's saying is be in a state of steadfastness. And that doesn't come instantaneous. For example, let me give you an illustration. If I want a train that's running 40 miles an hour down the tracks and, and I'm crossing that track, I'm going to cross those railroad tracks, and I want that train to be stopped. Train, be stopped. Well, that train is not going to just be in a state of stopness, just instantaneous. If I ask the train, and, and the engineer of the train, hey, stop that train, be stopped. Well, he's got to do a variety of things to get that train to be in a state of stopness, of stillness. And that's going to take time. And that's going to take effort. And things are going to happen. So, if I'm going to cross that railroad track, and I see that train coming, and I say, be stopped, I've got sense enough to know that that train cannot be in a state of stopness that quickly before I cross that railroad track. I need to make sure that the train is in a state of stopness before I cross the tracks. So when I cross the tracks, I'm not in danger. Why? The train is in a state of stopness. Here's the point. Last week, we talked about be steadfast. And we talked about the seven areas of influences in this world. And if we are going to be in a state of steadfastness, we can't just wait until these areas of influences attack us. When, when the media says what it says, when the government says what it says, when our business and financial affairs do what they do, when all these seven areas of influence comes into our lives, which they all do, and they all influence us, if we are not already in a state of steadfastness, then these areas of influence are going to crush us, just like that train. If we cross the tracks, and that train is not in a state of stopness, it's going, to, it's going to run over us. It's going to destroy us. So if we are not already in a state of steadfastness, then all of these influences are going to hurt us. We need to be steadfast. Then we're able to take care of these areas of influences in our life. So tonight, today, we are talking about to be or not to be, what? Of good cheer. To be of good cheer. We are fighting a battle. The physical versus the spiritual. We've got a world pandemic going on right now in this physical world. And we also have things going on in our life physically. Just last week, uh, we lost... Uh, Shirley Ivey, and then we lost, just a week before that, we lost Susie Phillips, and then a week before that, we lost Jim Hester. And, and when we go through these losses of loved ones, and you probably lost people that maybe we don't even know about, cousins, I understand. 
from the in-law family. So, so you lost people that you love. This is happening in the world. Things happen in the world all the time. People are out of work and they don't know where their next meal is going to come from or how they're going to pay their rent or how they're going to pay their mortgage. They just don't know. They're sick. Maybe they got the coronavirus. Maybe they got COVID-19. Maybe they don't. But they're still very sick, got lots of problems. Maybe they have a broken relationship. They're going through a divorce. Or maybe their best friend broke up with them. Uh, they had a, they're, they're on the outs with one another. Maybe, maybe it's something going on with a broken relationship throughout the community. The government is in a state of, of uh, division. Every time you turn on the TV, you've got to be on one side or the other side of the aisle. If you're not on either or, then the other people are, are your enemy. And we're, we've got an election coming up, and that gives us a, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of worry. What's going to happen? What if Donald Trump gets to be president? Oh, my. Well, what if Joe Biden gets to be president? Oh, my. So we have all of these things going on in the world. So how is it that we can be of good cheer in the middle of all of this. Well, let me say this. If we are waiting to be of good cheer when the attacks come, when this world, this, this physical world uh, starts coming down on us, then we're not going to be ready to face it. There's a battle going on between physical and spiritual. And if we don't get spiritual and be of good cheer, then the physical world is going to destroy us. We've got to be of good cheer in the spiritual realm before the physical world begins to destroy us and come upon us. So we need to be in a state of good cheer before we need to be of good cheer. John chapter number 16 verse 33. Hope you're taking notes. Write this verse down. Go back and study it in context later. But here's what God said. These things I have spoken unto you. Now this is Jesus. This is God revealing to Jesus what to tell us while he's here on earth through the uh, apostle John. And he says, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. I want you to have peace. I want you to be in a state of good cheer. Joy, happiness, gladness, peace. Now he says this, in the world you shall have tribulation. That's going to happen. There's going to be difficult sickness, death, dying, uh, two hurricanes coming into the gulf at the same time. Uh, only can happen in 2020, right? That's what somebody had said in these, these times that we're going through. All this stuff is, is going on. You're going to have tribulation in the world, in the physical realm. But in me, in the spiritual realm, you can have peace. You can be of good cheer. He says, that's what he says. But be of good cheer. I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Now, it's not just the physical things in the world as far as sickness and death and dying and hurricanes and pandemics. It's what the world teaches that is not true. It's, it's doctrines and, and demon, demonic things that are going on out there that is against God, that is against Christianity, that is against righteousness, that is against truth. So that's, the world brings that to the table as well. Jesus, he says, you're not of the world, you're, you're of, of, of peace in me. He says, I, Jesus, I've overcome all that. So you can have peace, you can be in a state of good cheer in the midst of all of this physical, worldly problems. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, Peter puts it like this. But rejoice, <laughs> be of good cheer. Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Christ came to this old world. And there were Pharisees and Sadducees and all kinds of folks that came up against him. They turned him over to the world government of Rome. And they put him on a cross with Roman soldiers there to, to make sure that he dies. And he did die on that cross. And, and when you come into this world, if you are a Christian you're going to come up against these obstacles, these problems. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That 
Here's the reason. When his glory shall be revealed, and it's going to be, Jesus Christ is going to come back in all of his glory. And he's going to reveal himself. And every eye will see him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. And when his glory shall be revealed, you who are rejoicing already, you are in a state of good cheer. You're rejoicing. You're partakers of Christ's sufferings. When that happens, ye may be glad. Also with exceeding joy. You're already rejoicing. And you are already in a state of good cheer when all of these worldly things are, are coming against you. And if you will do that, then when he comes, you will be glad. You will be in a state of gladness. There's so many people out there that are waiting for Jesus to come back and they're not of good cheer now. They're not rejoicing now. They're not finding their peace and their hope and their joy in Christ now. How in the world can they expect to be glad then? Not going to happen. When His glory is revealed and we have not been rejoicing in Christ, then how can we just all of a sudden be glad? There's people that are not going to be glad. They're going to run to the rocks and the hills and say, Fall on us. Hide us. Because they can't be glad. Because they've never been glad. They've never learned to rejoice and, and be of good cheer. 1 Peter 3 verse 14 says, But if you suffer for righteousness sakes, if, if you're suffering, now you, you're in the right, you didn't do wrong, but yet you're still suffering. Well, you're just like Jesus. He came to this world and he was not only right, he was perfectly right. And yet he suffered. So you're in a good category if you're right and you're still suffering. But if you suffer for righteousness sake and, and because you're trying to do good, you're trying to do what's right and people are cutting your legs out from under you because you're trying to do what's right because they want to do what's wrong. They want to advance themselves and, and you're trying to do what's right to advance Christ and you're going to suffer for that. Well, if you're doing that, happy are ye. You are in a state of good cheer. And be not afraid. Be of good cheer. The opposite of that is being afraid. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be in a state of fear. And so many times, uh, all these areas of influence, the media, the government, the financial world, even religion, and, and even family, all of these areas... They want to make you have a spirit of fear. They want you to be in fear. Why? So that they can control you. All they got to do is just say, boo, and then you're scared to death. And you'll do whatever they tell you to do, even in religion. If you don't do this, the Islamists say, we'll cut your head off. And they will. And, and their, their people are in a state of fear. So that's why they do what they do. Folks, he says, don't be afraid of their terror. Don't be afraid of terrorism, of all of these areas of influence that come against you. Don't be afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. Don't be in a state of fear and a state of troubleness. God's already got this. God's got this under control. It didn't surprise God that the coronavirus hit in 2020. He knew it was coming. He knew all about it. He knows about it now. He knows whether or not we're going to have a vaccine or not, whether even we need it or not. We don't need to be troubled about it. Now, are we concerned? Do we take action? Do we take God? God doesn't want us to stand in front of the train and say, Oh, God, uh, I know you're going to stop that train. Well, get off the tracks. You know, sure, we're wearing masks. Sure, we're doing things and, and keeping away from it as much as possible. But we're not in fear about it. We're not troubled about it. People have been doing this ever since Christ has been here. Matthew 24 is a chapter that people use all the time to try to strike fear into folks. Uh, Jesus is going to do this at the end time. And this is going to happen with earthquakes and, and there's going to be wars and all this stuff. And they use Matthew 24 a lot to invoke fear and invoke your mind to be troubled out there. Well, here's what Matthew 24 actually says in verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars 
and rumors of wars. You're going to hear about this all the time. See that ye be not troubled. Don't be in fear about it. Be of good cheer. What? How can I be of good cheer when I, when I hear about Iran going to attack Israel? Or I hear about the North Korea is going to attack South Korea. Or China is going to come over here and kill us all. Uh, how can I be of good cheer? We need to be of good cheer. Because that's all physical. We're in the spiritual realm. And when we're in the spiritual realm, we can be of good cheer. And not be troubled. For, here's why. All these things must come to pass. This is going to happen. Pandemics are going to happen. They're going to come and they're going to go. Wars are going to happen. They've been happening for years. They're going to happen for years to come until Jesus comes back. But the end is not yet. Do not let people trouble your mind. Don't let them shake your spirit. Listen to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. Now he had already wrote them one letter, 1 Thessalonians. And he, and he told them a bunch of things about Jesus is going to come and the dead in Christ will rise. It's going to be a good day uh, because you don't worry about your dead mother who is a Christian. She's not going to miss the second coming. She's going to rise from the dead. And then we which are alive, we're going to meet them together in the sky. It's going to be a great day. Well, people read that letter and they twisted it. Just like people twist Matthew chapter 24 and other scriptures and the Revelation. They take the Revelation and just make mincemeat out of it to invoke this troubled state of mind and, and troubled state of spirit in folks. Well, they read Paul's 1 Thessalonians and they began to twist it and rest it, the Bible says, twist it out of shape. And they began to cause people to be fearful about the second coming and all of that. Well, here's what Paul said when he heard about that. He sat down and wrote them 2 Thessalonians. And here's what he said in chapter 2, verse number 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind. Don't let your mind get all shook out of place. Or be troubled. You're supposed to be of good cheer. You're a Christian. You're, you're operating in the spiritual realm. Don't be troubled, he says. Neither by spirit... Don't let your spirit be troubled, neither by word, or if anybody says a, a word to you that will trouble your, your spirit, or by letter from us. Don't even let that happen. So don't let your mind, don't let your spirit, and don't let words, and don't let even a letter from Paul. And Paul wrote a letter, 1 Thessalonians, and people were using that to invoke fear and and problems and troubledness in, in their sphere of influence. He said, don't let that happen. As that the day of Christ is at hand, because that's what they were all saying about it. He said, don't, don't, don't let all that bother you. Be in a state of good cheer. Don't let things trouble your mind, your spirit, wherever that trouble comes from, whatever area of influence comes. John chapter 14, verse 1 it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Uh, Matthew 6, 33 is probably my favorite. But here's John 14, verse 1. And here's what Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, he had just told them, I'm going to die. He told his apostles, I'm going to die. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to arrest me. They're going to turn me over to the Gentiles. And they're going to crucify me. Oh, that's troubling, is it not? If I heard that he's going to do that to my good friend... I'd be troubled about that. But if I'm operating in a state of spiritualness instead of a state of physicalness, then I can still be in a state of good cheer, even though the physical things are going to happen. And that's what Jesus is telling them. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You trust God. Believe also in me. Trust me. And there's where our being of good cheer can come, how do we do it with all the trouble that's around, with all the physical things that's against us? How can we be of good cheer? Number one, trust. Trust God. Trust Jesus. You believe in God, you trust God, believe in Jesus. Trust Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8 says, And having food and raiment, food and clothes, let us be therewith content. 
How can David Conley be in a state of cheerfulness? How can I be of good cheer? Well, then I don't let the world bother me. If I've got food and clothes, then be content with that. Now, that's not saying that I can't have aspirations to grow and get better and do better in my life. But what it is saying, fundamentally, is that you don't let the physical world blow your spiritual world out the water. You be content. That's how you be of good cheer. You learn to be content. That's what he says. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 5, let your conversation, that's your way of life, be without covetousness. Don't look at the physical world out there. Be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Trust me, God says. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll take care of you. So be content. That's how I can be of good cheer. In Philippians 4.11, Paul says, Not that I speak in respect of want. It's not like I need anything from this whole world. Now he said this, by the way, while he was in prison in Rome. He was a prisoner. He said, I'm not worried about the physical world. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. That's a key word. I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I can be of good cheer. I can rejoice. I can be glad. I can operate in the spiritual realm if I learn to not let the physical world occupy my brains, occupy my spirit, occupy my mind. If we let the, spirit, the physical world take over our worries and our, uh, the things that we are going to accomplish or not accomplish, then that's going to bring me a spirit of not good cheer. I'll be troubled. I'll be afraid. He says, learn something, David. Learn to be content in your spiritual walk. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11 says, And that you study to be quiet. Be quiet. David, settle your spirit. Settle your mind. Settle your soul. Settle all these things. Be quiet. And to do your own business. There's too many people out there that are operating in the businesses of others. They want to control your business. They want to get into your business. And it's all about your physicalness. Uh, they're, they're wondering, how do you spend your money? How do you uh, operate in your job? And, and how do you do your stuff? When we're worried about other people's business, then we can never be in a state of good cheer. I'll never be happy trying to run your business. In fact, he says, work with your own hands. you got your own business to operate in this physical world. But he said, we commanded you to do this. This is not an option. Be quiet. Mind your own business. Work with your own hands in this physical realm. Now, sure, I'm concerned about everybody else's spiritual welfare, and I'm going to, to preach, and you're going to talk to your children. You're going to talk to your neighbors about their spiritual condition. But you're not going to worry about, you're not going to get into their physical business because that's going to let the physical world uh, offset the spiritual world. Here's the idea. Calm yourself. Be quiet. And then you can be in a state of good cheer. Romans 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not physical. The kingdom of God is it's not food and it's not drinking. He, he's, that, that's just a basic way of saying it's not physical. The kingdom of God is not physical. But what is it? It's righteousness. It's spiritual. He said, and it's peace. You can be of good cheer if you operate in the kingdom of God, if you operate in the spiritual realm, and it's joy. That's where you get your joy. You'll never find peace and calmness and quietness and good cheer if you're always worried about the physical. Get into the spiritual, and you'll find peace, and you'll find joy. What did he say? In the Holy Ghost. We could translate that the Holy Spirit. It's all about the Spirit. The question today is to be or not to be of good cheer. Do you want to be of good cheer? And if you're waiting for some future date that when things start happening in our life, then I'll, all of a sudden I'll be of good cheer. No, you won't. If there is trouble in your life, if your mind is shaken, if your spirit is shaken, if your soul is troubled, 
then you're not going to be of good cheer later. You start becoming a person of peace and joy and gladness and good cheer right here and right now. Because Romans 5 verse 11 says this, And not only so, but we also joy in God. There's where our joy is. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom, Jesus Christ, we now have received the atonement. We are in recon- at one That's what atonement means. at one We can be at one with God. And if you're at one with God, then you are at peace. And you are in good cheer. And you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next. Why? Because Christ has overcome the world. And he's given us, plain and simple, the plan of salvation. If your spirit is not at peace, and if you're not in Christ, then you've got a lot of reason to be troubled in your spirit. You've got a lot of reason to be troubled in your mind if you're not at one with God through the blood of Jesus. But if you're at one with God through the blood of Jesus, then you have every reason to be of good cheer. Why don't you want to be in that state of good cheer? You can right here and right now as you respond to the gospel. Why don't you come while together we stand and sing. There's a great day coming A great day coming There's a great day coming by and by When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? for the Lord's Supper, please turn to number 447. 447. We'll sing the first verse only. 447. Lead me to Calvary. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony.
The book of Isaiah has been called the Gospel of the Old Testament because it contains so many specific prophecies concerning Jesus and what he would accomplish while he was on this earth and even his dying on the cross. As we think about the Lord's Supper, I'd like for us to read Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 11, as the prophet describes so vividly what Christ was about to go through uh, when he was to be rejected and suffer the crucifixion on the cross. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he was made... He, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail tran of his soul, and shall be satisfied. For his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. We pray with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for your love that devised the scheme and plan of redemption that centered in a crucified Savior. We're so thankful for your love that sent your Son to this earth that he might be that sacrifice that was required for us to have the forgiveness of sin. We pray, dear Father, as we gather around this Lord's table and we partake of the bread, that we remember the body of Jesus as he was in his human form upon this earth, how he was abused in so many ways, being slapped, punched, hit, spit on, cursed in every way he was afflicted and he did that for us and then his body was taken and nailed to that wooden cross we pray dear father that we'll remember that the suffering that jesus went through for each one of us as we partake of this bread we pray this through jesus name amen Will you pray with me again? Our Father in heaven, we know that it was in the crucifixion that Jesus shed his blood. And we know from your word that it's in the blood that we can be washed of our sins if we're obedient to the gospel. We pray to Father again that you'll help us to remember the shedding of this blood that it was required if we were to have our sins forgiven and help us to be ever grateful to you and look to Jesus as our Savior and allow that love and his death to motivate us to be the best Christians we can possibly be. And we pray this all through Jesus' name. Amen.
That concludes the Lord's Supper, but we do have the command and the opportunity on the first day of every week to make a contribution, to give so that the work of the church can be carried on. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for every blessing that you give to us. We're thankful for the spiritual blessings that we have uh, being a child of yours, a member of the church, and having your love poured out on us, and especially uh, the forgiveness of sins through Jesus. But we're also thankful for all the physical blessings that you have so abundantly bestowed on each one of us. We're thankful for the ability and means to earn a living and to have an income. And we pray, dear Father, that you'll help us to generously be willing to give what we've been able to earn so that your work can be carried on in this area and in this congregation. We pray that you'll bless our elders as they oversee the distribution of these funds, that they'll make the very wisest use, especially in spreading the gospel. We pray this all through Jesus' name. Amen. so good to worship together uh, on this Lord's Day. And as you go out into this world, remember to be of good cheer. Brother Kerry has one more song, song of closing, and then Brother Van Roberts will direct our minds in our closing prayer. Let us stand as we sing number 391. 391. We'll sing the first verse. Once from my poor sin sick soul, Christ did every burden roll. Now I walk redeemed and whole, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day. Let us pray together. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for all the many blessings we often take for granted. We pray, Father, thank you for letting us come and worship thee this morning. Pray, Father, with a cheerful heart. Pray, Father, that we'll take it and apply it to our everyday lives, that we'll be cheerful in our everyday walk with thee. And pray, Father, that it'll be shining to others uh, our Christian ways and principles. Pray, Father, that you will be with those that are sick, especially Miss Sarton and others that's hurting at this time. Please let the doctors and nurses take care of them and comfort them as only you know how. Pray, Father, bless those that are less fortunate. Let us do all we can to help them. We pray, Father, thank you for our congregation here and the uh, members of it and pray that we strive uh, daily, that we'll look to you for guidance in every decision we make and try to be better Christians. Pray, Father, as we go throughout this week. Pray, Father, let us look to you for guidance and always have uh, prayer, the avenue of prayer to you. Pray, Father, forgive us when we sin. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>